All right, everybody, get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 11. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, Jeremiah 11, verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Okay, well, what covenant is that? Well, let's take a look. Well, one of the major covenants in the Bible is the covenant that God made with Abram, who he re later renamed Abraham, Genesis chapter 17. So, well, let's read a little bit here. Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, 99 years old, people, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations many nations uh does one little country over in the middle east is that many uh no so you got two choices here god's a liar or that little country in the middle east is not of abraham Take your pick. I already know what my answer is. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And that's what Abraham basically means, father of many nations. Verse 6. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. All right, well, where's all these nations of Abraham, and where's all these kings? Where are they? Well, if you're looking at a little country in the Middle East, I, I believe you're looking in the wrong place. But, uh, hey, that's just my opinion. And I will establish my covenant... Between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, his children, in their generations for an everlasting covenant. An everlasting covenant. How long is an everlasting covenant? Uh, everlasting, forever, eternal. Huh. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed, children, after thee and their generations, generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed, children, after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now this is the uh, covenant of the flesh. Now remember, there's going to be a covenant of the Spirit later. Verse 11. 
And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, it shall be a token of the covenant twixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. Every man child. Do you know the Muslims, they do what they call female circumcision. Where is that in the Bible? It's not. Where did that come from? The devil. They cut out uh, one of the woman's two pleasure spots for marital relations, if you catch my drift. What kind of barbarism is that? I mean, really? It's supposed to be the man that gets circumcised, not the woman. I mean, there's... Uh, it's unbelievable. I know, I don't usually rail on the uh, Muslims, but uh, yeah. And he, verse 12, and he that is eight days old. Now remember, uh, seven days is, the seventh day is the Sabbath. The eighth day is the beginning of a new week, a new creation. That is why the eighth day. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or, or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised in my covenant shall be in your flesh, you know, covenant of the flesh, for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abram, Abraham, as for Sarai thy wife, Thou shalt not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give her a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Plural. Nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham laughed. Uh, I'm sorry. Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. And said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. See, Ishmael was the seed of the flesh. See, Sarah and Abraham got tired of waiting on God. And Sarah said, okay, take my handmaid Hagar here. Have a child with her and it'll be our child. The thing was, now Hagar was an Egyptian. So Ishmael was the firstborn of Abraham. Uh, who was the firstborn of Eve? Was not Cain? Who was the firstborn of Rebecca? I think it was Rebecca. Yeah, I think it was Rebecca. I, I got to make sure. Let me make sure. Yeah, it was Rebecca. All right. Uh, the first one that came out of Rebecca was Esau, who is cursed. So the firstborn in this fallen world uh, usually didn't do very well. Uh, look at Jacob Israel. If memory serves me correctly, Reuben was his firstborn. And Reuben uh, went into one of Jacob's wives. I don't think it was his mother, but uh, he got tired of waiting and uh, decided yeah so that didn't you know that didn't work out too good 
So the uh, first born during this time just uh, wasn't very good. Yeah. So Genesis 17, 18, And Abraham said unto God, O that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. You know, there's uh, people say, you know what? Do you know what the word Saxons means? It means sons of Isaac. Yeah. How come they didn't teach you that in church? And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. Now, the Arabs claim Ishmael as their uh, father. God said he would twelve princes and make him a great nation and make him fruitful. Do you know that there are hundreds of millions of Arabs? Hundreds of millions of Arabs. Uh, did God keep his promise to Abraham for I, uh, Ishmael? Looks like it. Look at all the Arabic kingdoms that you got down in the Middle East. And then people tell me that the little country in the Middle East is blessed. And God made them a, you know, God bless them, really? How come there's more Arabs by probably 10 times or 20 times than there are that special little nation in the Middle East? I mean, if you listen to your pastors, God's a liar. There's hundreds of millions of Arabs. And there's only a, maybe 12 to 15 million you-know-whos in the Middle East. I mean, it's no wonder I lost my faith when I was a, a pre-high schooler. God, they, they, turn, they turn God's promises into lies. Now, Ishmael was of Hagar, who was an Egyptian. Remember, keep, keep that in mind. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant, okay, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Now God's going to multiply Ishmael, make him fruitful, and make him a great nation. But Ishmael was not the covenant seed. Isaac was. And God said he would make a covenant with Isaac and his seed after him. Well, guess what? Jacob Israel. But that's beyond the scope of this Bible study. Now, I have a Bible study called The Arab World and Bible Prophecy, where I go into this in a much, much more detail than I'm going to cover here. And if you're interested, I got a playlist on the covenant of Abraham, where I go into pretty de detailed uh, studies on Abraham, for as long as I'm up on YouTube anyway, so, you know. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. 11, verse 1. I guess we'll start over. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant. And what's a covenant? It's just a promise. You know, it's like a contract. That's basically what it is. It's like a contract. 
you do this, I'll do that. God said, keep my covenant. Hear ye the words of this covenant and speak unto the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace. You know, the Bible talks about, uh, well, when the first time a word appears, appears in the King James Bible, gives you an indication of what that word or phrase has re uh, in relation to what. Do you know the first time that the word iron appears is in relation to one of Cain's children? They were instructors of in iron. I guess they were blacksmiths. When the Bible talks about the ten toes of iron and clay of the beast system in the book of Daniel. What's iron? Are Cain's descendants iron? And what about the clay? Is clay representative of Adam when the Lord took of the earth and, and formed a body and then breathed into him the breath of life? That would be my guess. You know, you not one time in Scripture do you ever, do you ever see not one of Cain's descendants ever talked kindly about in the Bible? Not one time. I wonder why that is. Huh. The Iron Furnace people the Iron Furnace. Now, I find it interesting that in uh, Japan that the uh, sword makers claim that their descendants were taught how to make steel swords by the gods that came down from the sky. The fallen angels? You know, the, the only thing is uh, if you take iron and there's a beach in Japan that has iron oxide. Iron oxide is just basically rust. But what they do is they scoop up this iron oxide, iron, and they superheat it, and the oxygen burns off. Well, it burns off. And then they take carbon and what is charcoal what's coal carbon and they mix it with the iron I don't know the exact formula but the thing is when the iron and the carbon bond together it becomes steel now there's other things that they put in steel for different uh, purposes but the point is, steel is 10 times harder than iron. So you could make an iron sword, it would weigh 10 times more than a steel sword of the same strength. And iron is brittle. It's like glass. You drop it, it hits, it doesn't really bend, it'll just break. Steel, on the other hand, will bend before, and it won't break. I mean, you can break steel, but it'll bend before it, it breaks. So, that's your little history lesson. And no, I'm not a metallurgist. It's just a little stuff that I'd read. I always thought I would like to be a knife maker. Uh, but, you know, they're making stuff in China. <laughs> when you can buy a knife for $10... Uh, in, from China, nobody's going to spend the money to buy one of my knives. 
you know. All right, verse 4. Jeremiah 11, 4, which... Um, all right, well, verse 3. And say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant. Now, there was two different types of covenants in the Bible. There's an unconditional covenant, which God says, I will do this no matter what. And then there are conditional covenants. God says, you do this, I'll do that. I'll do that, you do this. Well, that's like a contract. You know, somebody, you have a car for sale. You say, okay, I'll sell you the car. Um, you give me half down. Pay me the other half at uh, 30 days later and the car's yours. Well, if they don't give you the money, they don't get the car. That's like a contract. A conditional covenant is like a contract. You do your part, I'll do my part. Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice and do them according to all which I command you. So shall ye be my people, and I will be your God. See, God wants obedience. He wants us to obey him, not because he's a tyrant like the Satanists will try to convince you. No. He's trying to protect you. You know what? Uh, don't play around with women, guys. Don't play around with women until you get married. Well, guess what? You play around with the wrong woman and you can get a genital, genital herpes. And from what I understand... That's the gift that keeps on giving and is forever until the day your flesh uh, decays and rots away. Yeah. From what I understand, genital herpes, there is no cure. So, yeah. I remember when I was in high school, I uh, my sister, the registered nurse, sat me down and gave me a little life lesson about women, loose women. She's like, there's like a hundred different uh, diseases that you can catch from a woman. I was like, oh, that's nice. You know, everybody knows about syphilis and gonorrhea, and then there's chlamydia and uh, herpes, and there's a bunch more, but I, I don't know. I'm not an expert on those kind of things, but... Uh, that's why the Lord said, you know, stay away. And uh, when the um, Europeans came to the Americas, I'm not sure if I got it right, but I believe that the uh, Europeans gave the uh, Indian women, well, the native, what they called Indians, uh they exchanged uh, gonorrhea with them for their syphilis. And then they brought it back to Europe. I mean, it's... You know, the, the Lord has a reason why he does these things. You know, he's not being cruel and mean. But uh, there's people who say, Oh yeah, God's trying to keep you down. You know, like Eve... Your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Well, I only want to know good anymore. I don't want to know evil. For almost half my life, I was an expert on evil. And by the way, God did give Israel a conditional covenant. You know, you keep the commandments, my statutes, my ordinances, and I will bless you. And if you don't, well, then you get the curses. All right, verse 5. That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this day. Then answered I and said, So be it, O Lord. Then the Lord said unto me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah 
and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and do them. For I earnestly protested unto your fathers in the day that I brought them up out of the land of Egypt, even unto this day, rising early and protesting, saying, Obey my voice. The Lord says, Obey my voice. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. Oh yeah. You want to read about the blessings and the curses? Oh boy, I did a Bible study on that one. Let's go take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 30 real quick. This is going to be, you know, this is the stuff they don't teach in churches. I mean, I, I know I'm not the only one that teaches this stuff, but there's very, very few. Very few. You know, I didn't want to be a Bible teacher. I didn't want this job. I didn't ask for this job. You know, I mean... I, and I never would have believed it when I was in high school. If somebody told me in high school that I'd be a Bible teacher one day, I would have cussed them out and told them to go to that hot place. Yeah, I'd have told them to go to hell. Leave me alone. I'd have, uh, it's hard to believe. But I wasn't, uh, it wasn't God that drove me away. It was all those fake preachers and all the hypocrisy in the church. And uh, today I can even say that, hey, I resemble that remark in some ways, you know, so. All right, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, listen to that, if any of thine be driven out unto the out, outmost parts of heaven. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. What does that mean? Does that mean if you're uh, in an airplane or something? Or, you know, I, what does it mean, utmost parts of heaven? Is that talking about space travel? Is that talking about flying in a plane or in a rocket? I wonder. You know, this is in Deuteronomy. This is like 45, oh, more, probably more than that, pro at least 4,500 years ago. At least. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from hence, thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, 
to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou might mayest live. Wow. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecute, persecuteth thee, persecuted thee. But, but, Chaplain Bob, God loves everybody. Uh, well, you, if you hear that, I, I suggest you find another church because you're in the wrong place, buddy boy or girly girl. Verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Wow. Wow. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, children, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If, I, F, if, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven. Uh, well, you know what? These commandments were kind of far off because the papists tried to hide the Bible from the people. You know, you got people in Germany, people in England, people in France. And what are the papists preaching in? Latin. They didn't want the Bible in people's language so that they can understand. And they murdered those that dared to give us the Bible in our own language. And even today, you got people that will tell you, oh, well, the King James Bible's wrong. Tell them to go to hell. Either they're deceived or they're deceivers, but either way, they're not the Lord's. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And they do. God's sheep hears his voice of the great shepherd. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou will not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Gordon, Jordan, to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that 
thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Back to Jeremiah 11. Let's start in verse 8. We'll read it again. Yet they obeyed not, nor inclined their ear, but walked every one in the imagination of their evil heart. Therefore I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but they did them not. And the Lord said unto me, A conspiracy! A conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Oh, wait a minute, Chaplain Bob, if you believe in conspiracies, you're, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're a nut. Well, guess what? The Bible talks about conspiracy. And the Lord said unto me, a conspiracy is found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. And you listen to John Hagee and he'll tell you, oh, well, God made an unconditional covenant covenant with the you know who's and he he can't break it no but they did they intermarried with the canaanites which they were told not to do but chaplain bob god loves everybody well you can think that if you want i know better we just read in uh, uh, deuteronomy 30 that we have enemies yeah, and God's going to curse them. Verse 11, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil, I will bring evil upon them, that they shall not be able to escape, and though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. Yep, I'm going to bring judgment upon them, and when they cry, I'm not going to listen to them. No, uh-uh. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods, plural, go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Ooh. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah. And according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal, the false lord, the god of Satanism. Verse 14. Listen to this carefully. Jeremiah is being told, this therefore pray not thou for this people don't pray for this people don't you dare pray for this people that's the bob translation therefore pray not thou for this people neither lift up a cry or prayer for them for i will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble I've had it with these people. I'm done. It's time for wrath. Well, that would be the Bob translation, but. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many? And the holy flesh is passed from thee. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. Yeah, when they do evil things, they rejoice. I guess they have a party, right? 
The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me, to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it, and I knew it, and I know it. Then thou showest me their doings. Oh boy. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter, and I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. See, they were going to kill Jeremiah. Hey, we don't like his uh, message, so let's kill the messenger. Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. Yeah, let's kill him so that we don't remember his name anymore. But, O Lord of hosts, that judgest righteously, that triest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I revealed my cause. Verse 21. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of the men of Anathoth, that seek thy life, so the men of Anathoth wanted to kill Jeremiah, that seek thy life, saying, Prophesy not in the name of the Lord that thou die not by our hand. In other words, the Bob translation would be, Shut up or we're going to kill you. Yeah, that's the Bob translation in modern English. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. And there shall be no remnant of them. For I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. Oh, boy. That uh, doesn't sound too good, does it? No. You know, if you wanted to have a very short attention uh, lifespan, all you had to do was be a prophet of the Lord. Yeah, they didn't last too long. You know, Benny Hinn can do a, a video. He'll have, what, a quarter million views in a few days. Me, I do a video and, yeah... Maybe 100 people, 150 maybe, you know. I'm not complaining, but God has his remnant. And that's why I'm here, for the remnant. You know, I just spent years and years and years studying and learning and all the things going on. And one day I just felt convicted like, I don't know, I'm not saying the Lord spoke to me. I'm not saying that at all. But I feel like the Lord said to me, you know, what's all what's what's up with all this endless studying? Teach. What good is studying, studying, studying if you don't share what you know? That's kind of how I felt. Convicted. So it's kind of a burden. Well, not not a a burden burden where you know like a beast of burden no but it's a burden on my heart to try to help as many people as I can for as long as I can because I know one day YouTube's not gonna let me be around or anywhere else 
So as long as Father has me on YouTube, I'll put out Bible studies. That's why I know going to Arkansas was a mistake. Because the Lord hadn't closed the door. So, all right, everybody. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.